I really like how now the lyrics are and the vocal is actually following the beat. And so you've got like him bouncing on the beat with his vocal. It sounds really nice. Hey everyone, Adam Mishan here, singer, songwriter, and vocal coach. And today I'm gonna be reacting to Jungkook singing Begin. Run, run, lost boy, they say to me. Guys, if you're interested in getting BTS swag, there's no better place than in the link down below or the card that I'm gonna leave up here for you guys to check out the swag that you can get for any of your K-pop idols. Um, you know, I have here my bias, Jimin, on my hat, and uh, now I think we're good to go. I really like how connected his voice is. And when I say connected, there's there's two ways that you can sing. You can sing with a bit of a breathy tone. Ya da 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 da. Right, so that would be more of a ha ah, breathy type of tone. He's got a little bit of vocal fry at the beginning of what he's singing. Ya da 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 da. And so because he's got a little bit of vocal fry, that connects his vocal cords and makes it more of a connected sound. So definitely, I like that sort of style and approach. Not that it's better than, you know, a lot of the other singers from BTS, but it just makes it more of a present and more of a forward type of sound, not so kind of airy and laid back. It gives it much more punch. By the way, if you guys are interested in learning any more about these types of terms, if you're connected, not connected, vocal cords. If you're confused by any of the terms that I'm throwing around, I really highly recommend you check out my program called Transform Your Voice. I'll leave a link in the description and I'll leave a card somewhere here for you guys. It goes through all of that and teaches you everything you need to know about the voice. So now he's throwing in a little more airflow. It's not going straight with chord closure. He's got a lot more airflow flowing through there. The onsets are getting more airy, which I think is really nice to be able to switch it up, change it up, not always stick with one way of uh, approaching the voice. <laughs> I really like that run, right? So I'm, I'm listening to this for the first time, so I'm trying to find that run, what it is. But that is really, really nice. I, I like how totally connected, very forward in his placement. It sounds really, really cool the way he does it. Totally flawless. I really like how now the lyrics are and the vocal is actually following the beat. And so you've got like him bouncing on the beat with his vocal. It sounds really nice. Yeah, so I really like his use of falsetto there. You make me all in a mix. Begin. Falsetto. So that's a really nice, I mean, he could totally, he has the ability to belt that, but he makes it kind of draw you in, pull you in and make you listen intently to that part because it seemed like it was going to crescendo, but he pulls back. So that's kind of the use of dynamics within a song that a lot of singers can really learn from. It's not just thinking about it as linear, right? That it's just like, I need to sing all the notes. That's what a lot of singers and new singers who come you know, as students, their main focus is let's hit these notes right on pitch because at the end of the day, the average listener, like most of you guys, probably don't know most of the technical jargon that we talk about here. But you can definitely tell if somebody's off pitch. So if I was singing like, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine, right, you know I'm off pitch. So one of the, the key factors for a lot of 
new singers is that they really want to hone in on their pitch accuracy so that by and large they'll be accepted as like you're a good singer because the average person can hear when you're on pitch or off pitch and so pitch is a very big factor with regards to singing but it's definitely not the whole picture and as you move past just pitch accuracy you get into all these different abilities to color the sound and if you guys are interested in kind of learning more about these more detailed techniques that i'm talking about and pitch accuracy and all these things i actually go through one-on-one lessons and I post all my one-on-one -on -one lessons in on my website so you could check out that link down below look for the lesson library and I'll leave a card for you guys here as well so you could check that out you make me right pulling back on that you make me And so there he wanted to play around with the notes there. He didn't keep it just straight and leave it there. He played around with the melody a bit to just add a, another element to it. And again, he did that, right? Because it would be boring. You make me begin. If that was all there was to it, Every single time, people get bored, right? So creating a little bit of diversity makes that dynamic shift where people still want to listen. Oh, what else is he going to do once he does that run? Maybe he's going to do something else. Yeah, I really like this kind of sparse pacing of the vocal. I don't know if this would be termed as a bridge or another verse, but it's definitely different than the first verse. And so what he's doing is he's leaving room for that vocal to breathe on either side, where he just kind of gives a quick vocal line, space for the music to be heard, and then vocal line, and then space for the music to be heard, which sounds really nice. Nice. I think I would term this as like the breakdown. So a lot of the instruments here have pulled away and it seems to be a, a like a spotlight on his vocal and his vocals going front and center and um, it's kind of getting all the attention in this part. All right, so, I mean, it sounds like it's a very upbeat type of song. It's definitely down-tempo, but it seems to be the melody is more upbeat, but it seems to be very sad lyrical content. And so this is an element of songwriting that I like to use a lot in my music, is replacing or creating a dissonance between the lyrical content and the feel of the song, right? So feel of the song could feel like a upbeat, melody and then having very sad lyrics helps to kind of create this tension within the music that I think sounds really nice. Like one song that I think of with regards to this, it's slightly different. It's not to do with sad versus happy, but if you've ever heard, I took a pill in Ibiza. So there he's singing about how living his life to try to keep up with everybody else in the music industry kind of left him feeling sad and left him feeling very negative. Whereas as the actual beat of the song is very much EDM and is in a very much within the vibe of the things that within the song he is talking down about are the very places where that music is played. So that's the kind of, there's an ironic content to it. And so I think that this song also has a bit of this irony in it. Because you All right, nice. So I, I like how now he's changing up the word, not sticking out with the same element in the chorus, even though, yes, a chorus could should generally stay pretty much the same throughout the song, but you can always make slight adjustments to it to allow the song to progress. And I think that that's what 
he's doing here. Instead of you made me begin, right? Which is where kind of like the idea of starting. Now you made me again. That's kind of like building on who I was, been reborn type of idea. Uh, I really like the vocal processing that they did there. All right, let's take a listen to the uh, live version. Oh, I love the uh, the smoke effect that they have on the stage. It's really cool. All right, sounding really good. That last trill was a little bit flat, but you know, it happens. Overall, very dramatic entrance and the vocals so far are sounding good. That was almost a little Michael Jackson move there, it, uh, it looked like. You make me be I mean, really awesome dance moves. That goes without saying. But yeah, the vocal is very much in line with the original. Not much is sounding different. It's very similar starting off at the beginning with a lot of chord closure and then adding in a lot of breath and air throughout the second part. Nice. And so this part as well, really not much to pick apart here. It's sounding just as good as the original. Like it doesn't have a lot of the same issues that some of the live versions of other singers have. And so to be able to sing like that, it takes a lot of release. I think it's also amazing that it's really him singing with regards to the full dance. And I mean, a lot of the pace of the dance is put in between on the breaks, but he's still moving a lot, even when he's singing, which uh, it's pretty incredible how he keeps it so balanced, even though he's dancing as much as he is. Nice. That was a really nice connected mix, definitely on the heavier side. So if you went with more of like a rounded vowel, that would make it more heady, more of a head mix. But there he really went wide with his mouth. And when you go wider, it's going to pull you more towards chest. And so that made it more of a chesty mix there. Yeah, and I think that this chorus really lends itself for dancing because it's just holding one note in falsetto, which is, I mean, as far as vocals go, it's one of the easier things to do. It's, you know, not like belting and trying to move around. Even though sometimes that can actually help, you know, movement within singing actually can loosen up some of the muscles that might want to hold tight when we should be keeping it loose and relaxed, right? The more loose and relaxed we are, the better off we're going Going to be vocally. That was so much a Michael Jackson move right there. You can see where he gets his dance inspiration. Yeah, so there he did the again a little bit more full voice. Didn't lean back as much onto the falsetto. Kept it more full voiced. Nice. I really like his uh, his falsetto out there. You make me right in in more of a falsetto tone on on the you make me as opposed to the lead up. He came down. Nice change up. So you could definitely tell that he's out of breath there, which tells you that that's really his vocal. Jungkook is a phenomenal singer, like really a phenomenal singer. Yeah, I'm a big fan. So if you like this video, please check out that video. I'm sure you're gonna love it as well.